Welcome to another talking event. As always, I'm Josh Nutt, aka Nutt, and uh, let's get to it. Coming up this weekend, a two-day event at Sherwood Forest. It's the March 24th and 25th. Uh, it's an interesting big game from Big Bang Paintball. They're usually doing events uh, in the southwest United States, but they are coming uh, to the Midwest for this event. Walmart Rewards. Now, for long-time watchers, Walmart may sound familiar as they are the people who release Scenario Slugs, which is a product we raved about in our Global 2 uh, coverage at Adrenaline Paintball last year. Uh, great product and a website uh, here to check out. So give them a look. Looking at this game's lore, we have a heavily sci-fi influence of our future fight to capture uh, and control something very important. An Astromart, which is uh, essentially a uh, deep space Walmart. Now, at first, I had probably the same thought you were having now, which is it sounds a little silly, Josh. But once I dug into the story and, and gathered an understanding, I really fell in love with this concept. And I think uh, so will you, if uh, you give it a chance. So, uh, Astromarts, they're these shopping biomes. They're found on asteroids all over the galaxy in the year 4224. Um, they've been built by a mega corporation named Walmart. But really, to understand this story, uh, I really enjoy this part, by the way, when a game does this. There's a full timeline, and I mean full here. Uh, you have to travel back to the start in 1981. That's right, the year Ronald Reagan was shot, HIV and AIDS appeared. And the CIA, in a dastardly plan to destabilize the black family, uh, was flooding the inner cities with a cocaine purchased from the uh, rebel Contras from Nicaragua uh, in its newest form, crack. During this year, on a happier note, everyone's favorite big box electronic store was founded and opened. Eight years later, expanding to groceries in, in 89, um, and then we jump forward to 2070. There uh, is because a big year for them. They become a megacorp, and they are opening their first uh, orbital shopping center around Earth. Like these guys, within 30 years, create their own form of energy called pocket fuel. They are just happening. They're with it. They are. They got laboratories. They got all kinds of stuff working on all this stuff. So we jump 450 years, uh, even further into the future, faster than light travel comes along. And they're able to spread their capitalist wings and fly to the stars. Go capitalism! Woo! We made it! Capitalism! Uh, so in the year 2800, the first Astromart is opened. Gotta say, uh, humanity, we made it. We can hawk junk to other species now. Suck it, communists! Capitalism number one! Over the next 1,000 years, the Astromarts expand... And they cover different uh, star systems. Uh, biomes are constructed, making long-term habita uh, habitation possible. And interstellar, interstellar tra uh, trade is developed with other forms of intelligent life. Just the dream of, 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 of a, uh, you know, a Star Trek sci-fi world that we're all getting along in space. In 3900, there is... Uh, full integration of advanced AI and robotics in managing the astromart. A big one being in 3903, when uh, uh, Helenus Astromart, which is the location for the game, unveils their newest creation, a sort of robotic maintenance unit nicknamed M&M. Seen here... No, that's Robot M&M, you idiot. I'm going to replace you with a trainable monkey one of these times. See if that does better. That's better. These multi-mod machines, basically uh, spider-like two-seater vehicles, and these play a large role in the event, which we'll cover in the rules. But which brings us to the year the game takes place in uh, 4224, which is 2200 years from our current date. Uh, things are flourishing on uh, Hellenus, a forest biome. Uh, the bright future is here. I can buy discount pants or very rare space rocks light years from home. Which brings us to the conflict between the two groups, uh, the wealthy snobs of Astro Buyers Club, 
and the thrifty shoppers of uh, cosmic discount guilt. So communism. Discount is for communism. But no one knows exactly what starts the fight on Hellenus that day. If uh, Earth historians were consulted, they, they'd muse it. It looked a lot like any big box uh, shopping store riot of the 21st century. It just happened to happen, you know, some 2,000 years in the future. Just your basic thing. You know, there's a big sale on. It's that Black Friday, you know, all that stuff. Somebody pushed somebody. Somebody got that item that you desperately needed as a gift for your cousin for space Kwanzaa. Uh, somebody was stampeded to death. Someone got fed up and grabbed the maintenance laser and went to town on fellow shoppers. Basically the same. Let's take a closer look at this head-to-head -head match. For the Cosmic Discount Guild, uh, Megan Lundy will be commanding with her exo uh, Jackie Drupkaski. I'm sorry, Jackie, if that's not correct. I, I try. Um, now, this faction is uh, all about the deal. They are looking around like a hawk for its next discount meal. Um, value is what drives them, and they really see themselves as savvy um, explorers of an endless quest uh, across the galaxy for the next great find. Megan will be portraying their plucky leader, Yasmin Chaudhry. For the Astro Buyers Club, capitalism, yeah! Portraying their leader, uh, the dapper, handsome uh, man, Max, is Jerry Baba Yaga uh, Maldonado, uh, with his exo, Matt Hillard. So the club is really interested in finding the rarest items they can, their wealth being the driving force, uh, luxury for luxury's sake. They aren't looking for an abundance of purchases, but rather that once-in-a-lifetime one. So good luck to both sides. Uh, the Astral Buyers Club actually attempted to recruit me, which I would have gladly hopped on board with uh, for this, but um, this one just sadly isn't in the cards for me. Uh, but I'm definitely there in spirit. Uh, Capitalism! Go Astral Buyers Club! Uh, yeah, air and spirit. I'm hoping for the victory because I have a full mortgage payment riding on them to win, and I don't feel like explaining to the bank where the money went. So let's cover the rules now. Uh, paint. This is paint only. Players found with outside paint, you're gone. Uh, it's only paint you buy there a day of or during free registration. There's only 68 calibers. Nothing else is accepted. Uh, the player cards. The faction-specific character cards are essential to this event. They're very cool. So I'd check a look at other people's and stuff. It's very neat, the artwork. And they are required to be on your person at all times. Do not lose them. If you lose your badge, you will have to pay full price replacement. The faction on your character badge must match the faction on your arm tape. If they don't match while you're in play, uh, your team receives penalty points. Your armband tape. Players will be identified by colored marking tape, which can be handed out to you by your commanders. It can be worn on both arms or on the back in front of the mask. Team colors must be worn at all times. Uh, playing gear. 280 feet per second, semi-auto only, no ramping, no full auto, and of course you need a barrel cover and an actual ASTM standards mask. Radios and cell phones, they are allowed and encouraged. You may monitor any frequency you wish. Players may use their radios or cell phones anytime while they're on the field and in play, so only when you're alive, guys. Dead men tell no tales, so any dead players that are caught spotting enemy positions with or without radios for their team will be strongly discouraged to continue doing so. Drones, they're only approved, uh, only allowed with approval from field and game producer. The referees, it will be uh, clearly marked. Do not argue with a referee under any circumstances. Don't argue with refs about uh, elimination calls. Serial specific questions uh, can be, uh, about rules can be radioed in for clarification if you're asked nicely. Uh, head ref, always ask nicely. A head ref, the head referee will always be available throughout the game for dispute uh, resolution and oversee referee and player interaction. Uh, the decision of the head ref is always fine. Non-player uh, is on the field, so we got media, people want to watch, spectators. Uh, they need a rest brand, they need to send a waiver prior to entering the field, so they need to probably talk to staff. Confrontations. Any verbal or physical confrontation will be handled on an individual basis. Uh, eliminations, your classic uh, quarter size paint. Uh, it, it basically hits you, breaks, quarter size paint, you're out. Uh, this includes any hit to your body, paintball marker, or equipment. If you raise your hand or marker above your head and or place your barrel sock on your barrel, you're out of play and must respond. Any player found to be playing on after being eliminated will be removed from play by referee and sent to a reinsertion point. Continue to disregard for elimination to result, uh, rules will result in penalt uh, penalties to your team and may result in ejection from the vent. Barrel tag. You may barrel tag in players and eliminate them without shooting. 
unless it's on your marker, the barrel must be at least eight inches uh, long, and that must be in plain sight, so you can't hide it up your sleeve. To barrel tag someone, you must touch it with the tip of your barrel anywhere below their collar. When they when you tag them, you must immediately say barrel tag when you touch them with it. Um, barrel tag players are immediately eliminated and to walk away quietly. Uh, response. During regular play, players will respond instantly at their team's starting location. You wipe off your hits, tag back in. Players may enter the field at their designated entrance. Players may exit the field from any allowable exit point. Bunkers on the field. No player may move any bunkers unless specific provisions are outlined by game control, allowing him or her to do so. The boundary tape, for safety reasons, do not cross or shoot over the boundary or nets. Do not use the netting as bunkers. Any players caught doing so will be eliminated and forced to reinsert. Dead men walk. Uh, this is interesting. They, they played, uh, did you mean a pleasant afternoon walk? Uh, yeah, so if you raise your hand or marker above your shoulder, you're considered out. Um, if you if your barrel sock is on, you're off. Otherwise, you're just a nice target. So pay attention. If anyone's kind of like strolling, I'm shooting them. Uh, flag stations. There are bread and butter of the Walmart rewards. Capture them for your, with your player badge. There's 13 stationary and 2 mobile. We're going to cover them a little later in the rules with the scoring. So thank you for that. Uh, shields. Walmart uh, rewards does not recognize shields as anything more than a giant target. Any break on a shield will eliminate the shield and the player. So no use in using them. Uh, smoke grenades. Only cold burning and only gay smoke grenades are approved. Rocket launchers. Uh, it's not safe to use rockets in space uh, or during uh, one of these biomes, so don't bring them. Uh, no rocket launchers allowed. Medic kits. Anybody can use them. Each medicate has certain 16 kit charges. Each time you scan a wounded player's car, uh, character badge, it will heal them and deplete a charge. Return a de depleted med kit, uh, no more L green LEDs on it, to a ref or a game control. Uh, players can serve wounded if they're hit anywhere on their body or uh, equipment. Headshots can't be healed. Wounded players must remain in place and call for a medic while counting to 60 seconds. If they reach 60 seconds, they're eliminated. Must respond at their base. Uh, scenario slugs must be uh, can only be used by M&M &M, uh, pilots and control other M&Ms. To any um, scenario slugs, uh, there's no other purpose for them. Any can hey, count the M&Ms. So you must have your badge upgraded to be able to use an M&M. &M. M&M &M pilots are considered role players and are, are expected to maintain the highest standards within this event. They're the core part of the game and can't run out of fuel. They can only capture mobile flags. There's two that they can capture. M&M &M pilots have one loadout that's scenario slugs. They can carry one passenger and drop them off anywhere in the field except the other team's respawn. To pick up a passenger, the M&M &M pilot must take a knee for three seconds. Passengers must keep their hand on the shoulders pilot during, uh, until they're dropped off. Drop off the player. They do the reverse. They take a knee for three seconds, and the players can let go. M&Ms and their passengers cannot shoot or be eliminated by paintballs, so don't deliberately shoot them at all. Bringing up the map and schedule, we can see a fully realized Hellenus Astro Mart. Very cool, bizarre style uh, shopping with forest biome. Other Astro Marts are made up of all kinds of different spaces like deserts, tundras, mountains, and jungles, which I think is a neat feature uh, for the story. There is 13 named locations on the map, as well as the flags indicated here uh, at the top and the bottom that indicate the spawn and HQ areas, which are the classic north and south spawns at Sherwood. So there are the 13 stationary flags that any player can capture. To capture a flag, you simply hold your badge up to the center of the flag until the light turns purple. Once you see it go purple, you uh, let go and it will flip to your faction's color. If that flag is already owned by your faction, it will remain that color. Walmart Rewards operates on 15-minute scoring cycles. The faction that controls the most flags at the end of each 15-minute interval wins that scoring cycle. And the flags reset to neutral, which is very simple, but always keep that in mind. It's not 15-minute games. It's a 15-minute cycle. You stay on the field the entire time. You don't leave. So that 15 minutes uh, is coming up. I'm already working on getting over to get these difficult flags or whatever right off the hop and keep them. This will be a game. This will be an aggressive game. I'm I'm pretty sure of. It's going to be a, a territory or control domination style game. It's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out. But wait, there's more. There are also two mobile flags that will be carried by refs. They can only be captured by M&M &M pilots, which we covered in the rules section. Finally, and this is a little different than the actual score because these scoring cycles work as um, the team that has all the flags gets the points for that scoring cycle. And the other team gets none. 
And then the team that wins the most scoring cycles, obviously, will be winning the game. Now, finally, uh, this, and this is different from the scoring cycle points. This is individual points. Finally, every time you capture a flag that your team doesn't control, your badge is rewarded with one point. The players with the most flag pulls will show up on the game's leaderboard. The top five players on the leaderboard at the end of the event will be recognized. No other awards will be given. So I'm fighting, I'd be fighting tooth and nail for those flag pulls for sure to get, try to get uh, my name up on that leaderboard. So thanks for checking out this uh, Talking Events episode. Uh, I'd really check out these guys, this uh, Big Bang Paintball. They do some cool stuff. I really like all the uh, story lore and everything they release uh, and different ideas that they have. Uh, there's something to really keep an eye out, especially if you're in the southwestern United States or down south there. I'd check them out. Um, they're even uh, doing some work in Texas, I think, uh, a month from this game as well on the 20th of, uh, uh, of April. April 420. Is that anything? I can't remember. Um, so thank you for tuning in. Once again, I am Josh Nutt, a.k.a. Nuts, and thank you for slowly watching my hair dry. Mm -hmm.